heading to London to face the Denver Broncos at Wembley Stadium coming up Sunday and a busy two hours ahead. Analyst Jeff Lagerman coming up. The Broncos-Jaguars matchup. Both teams 2-5. and five. Both teams on a four-game losing skid. It's the Jaguars' ninth appearance in London. They're eighth at Wembley Stadium. We'll get to that. And then at 5 o'clock, we'll hear from the head coach, Doug Peterson, joining us to get his thoughts on the game coming up and what they're trying to clean up from last week's loss to the Giants. Earlier this week, Doug Peterson on going for it on fourth and one early in the fourth quarter last week. It's been a topic throughout. I took into consideration how we were moving the ball offensively, uh, quite frankly. Um, and and so, you know, felt good about going for it in that situation. Yard. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you got to go, you know, 18 inches or so, right? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, you should you should pick those up. 98 to 100% of the time. Yeah, uh, you should. They didn't in that instance, unfortunately. And then the Giants drove for the game, uh, the go-ahead touchdown, at least, in that ball game last week. Now Jaguars cornerback Tyson Campbell discussing this defense. It was a rough day against the run for this group, but the defense as a whole continuing to grind to get it right. I wouldn't say uh, we're overpressing. I just think, like, you know, we just, we just going hard, you know. And, uh, you know, sometimes that can, you know, uh, hurt you. But, um, you know, everybody, you know, trusts each other on the field and, uh, you know, willing to, you know, do whatever it takes to win. So, you know, we're just going to keep keep pushing, uh, keep working in practice, uh, keep learning from our mistakes, and, you know, eventually it'll, it'll work out for us. Let's go to the offensive line now and rookie center Luke Fortner entering week eight of his first NFL season and still trying to improve week to week. Uh, constantly improving and kind of learning what you don't know, if that makes sense. There's, there's so much that you don't know you don't know. And as the week's gone on, I figured out things I need to be better at, things I need to work on and continue to prepare for. And uh, the vets in the room and, and the coaching staff have been incredible helping me out and making sure I know uh, what to expect. There you have it, all the sound from earlier in the week available on Jaguars.com, Jaguars social media as well. We'll hear more from head coach Doug Peterson coming up at 5 o'clock on the Doug Peterson Show on the Jaguars radio network. Jeff Lagerman here with us now. The big news this week, of course, though, Logs, is the trade of James Robinson to the New York Jets for a conditional six-round pick. Could be a fifth if he gets over 600 rushing yards. That's according to John Ozier on the Ozone Tuesday morning. So... On this Thursday, what does it mean for the offense going to London this week? Well, I don't think it changes a whole lot because I think the offense had already transitioned to ETN as their primary ball carrier just because he's been so much more explosive than James at the particular moment. And I don't know if James is completely healthy or not. And uh, I know they talked earlier in the week about how he had some knee things going on. Soreness, he said. Uh, yeah, yes. and uh, the reality is that when you watched him at Indianapolis, you watched him against the Giants, I, I thought it was taking a step back. He didn't look as fast. He wasn't running on his toes. And, uh, and that doesn't mean that at some point in the future that he wouldn't have been completely healthy and back to the James Robinson of old. But they felt, I guess, that this was the best for the team for this particular time. Uh, I think that that's an argument that you could have. You know, it, was it the right thing to do? I, I mean, I, for me, I, I probably would have liked to have keep, uh, kept him just because uh, he's been a really good back in the past, and I'd like to see him get back to that. But I also understand that sometimes it's best to move forward. And let's consider the, the rest of the running back room. So Michael Hasty is starting to get a little more play. He had that long touchdown run, of course, a couple of weeks ago. And well, Snoop Connor, the draft pick, has not been up yet this season. you got to see what he has to offer at some point, too. Yeah, at some point. And I, but I think the, the most important thing is, is that, first, first and foremost, love James. Great guy. Doesn't say a whole lot. Never had uh, anybody that I met that said a bad thing about James. He did a lot of really good things for this football team at a time which this team was not very good. And so that was all positive. And look, I hope the fresh start is great for him. And consider what happened last year to him. I mean, they, they were giving him the, the runaround last year, right? You I calling mean, that the runaround? I'm going to be nice and call that, it the that runaround. Was, that was one of the worst ways that you could have treated yes. a human being the way James Robinson was treated last year. But anyway, yeah. you know, like I wish him the best going forward. You know, I had a chance to meet his mom too. And, 
and they're good people, and you, you wish nothing but the best for, for all of them. And that also means now moving forward, Travis Etienne starting to get warm, it feels like. Three straight games with over 100 scrimmage yards, and he had his first 100-yard game last week. He did Starting fumble. to get warm? Yeah, he fumbled inside the five. JP, That's the one blemish warm. last week. I think he's – yeah, the the, uh, the fire's hot. I think. Look, and, and he's not perfect. I mean, he's still learning too. You know, the – the long run that he had at Indianapolis. If if he attacks the defender, that becomes a home run. Did you hear me ask Fred Taylor? You you brought it up last week that you wanted me to ask Fred about it and on pregame. What did and Fred I, say? He said there's a there's so many different moves you can try there. You can try to slow down, hesitate. You can Something. stiff arm him. You can do all that stuff. You can't just outrun him, which is what and, James well, he could have. Maybe what Travis but, tried to do. Either and way. then this past week, you know, he wasn't perfect this past week against the Giants. He has an opportunity on third and one, you know, on the much talked about fourth and one quarterback sneak that didn't work. Well, on third and one, if Travis follows Cam Robinson to the outside, he's one on one to the end zone. And does he score? Maybe. But we're not talking, guarantee this, if he follows Cam JP, we're not talking about the fourth and one and that you don't make and maybe you, do you take the field goal there to take the points to go up by seven. All of that conversation is dead. So there's still a lot of progress to be made with Travis Etienne. Uh, I like what Jermichael Hasty gives them. He's a guy that's given them a lot more speed, I think, than James has at this moment. And, uh, and then also, what will Snoop Connor do? I don't know the answer to that in preseason. Uh, the uh, the amount of impressive plays that he had was somewhat limited, but he was a young player in his first training camp ever. What will he become? We'll have to wait and see. Trevor Lawrence last week, um, what did you make of his game uh, against the Giants overall? I, I, well, first off, I thought he protected the ball well, uh, minus the interception there at the end, which was a very poor decision, which fortunately got called back because of a penalty against the Giants. <laughs> right. Because it was kind of a, a little bit of a panic throw. He's got pressure. He turns back to his left, and he just throws it without looking. And there's there's not a Jaguar receiver anywhere in that area. And fortunately, it was overturned. But he was at 50% completion rate, which is not high enough in this offense. It needs to be pushing that 70% range. He misses an open... Zay Jones on a stick route where he's standing still at about seven yards past the line of scrimmage. He misses Zay on the end zone. If he can drop that one in the bucket, that one's a touchdown. But you know the but he still makes impressive throws, JP. The one that he had to Christian Kirk, which is a little rub route with Zay Jones, he drops that one in the bucket beautifully. Late in the ball game, he makes the throw to Marvin Jones Jr. and he's got Dexter Lawrence, all 340 pounds bearing down on him, and, and Trevor gets smoked. I mean, smoked. And he still makes the throw to Marvin. I mean, those are the things that you like to see and you want to continue to see. Now, the challenge this week for the Jaguars offense, this Denver Broncos defense, they're not very good on offense. We'll get to that coming up. But their defense can hang and certainly has throughout the season. Second in the league in total defense. First in yards per play allowed, the least in the NFL. 15th against the run. Second against the pass. The most sacks in the AFC, 22 of those. They're number one in red zone. Fifth and third down. Third best scoring defense. I mean, these guys have stats on the defensive side of the ball, and that's what's keeping them at least somewhat close to winning some games. Well, they're they're good now. I mean, really good. And the, the, the two guys on the edge, which everybody knows about Bradley Chubb, he was there with Vaughn. He's uh, uh, a guy that's a, a force because he's got size and he's got pass rush ability, but the guy that really – that most people probably know nothing about is the one on the other side, which is 56, which uh, Baron Browning in his second year out of Ohio State, this guy can play. Yeah, he had a hip injury last week, though. We'll see if he's Well, available. I mean, let's see. But, I mean, if he's playing, this guy is legitimate, just as good as 55 on the other side. So uh, that's uh, it's going to be a tough challenge for the Jaguars offensively. But uh, – I like the way that this offense is trending, this Jaguars offense. I don't like some of the, the, the game, obviously, against the Texans, but the two games since, I like it. And there's still plays that are out there that, are, that they're not making. So if they just keep working and start making some of those plays that were there for the taking but they didn't get, particularly against the Giants, this is going to be a, one heck of a matchup. 
Secondary is pretty strong too. Patrick Sertan is a second-year player and former first-round pick, absolutely. stud, good player. Yeah, stud. Outside. Yeah, he's a stud. So, uh, yeah, this Denver Broncos team has got a better record than what most people would expect because of some of the disarray that they've had on offense and with coaching. Uh, yeah, it's uh, and look, Nathaniel Hackett is a guy that we know. Very well. Nathaniel Hackett was here as the offensive coordinator and eventually got relieved of his duties, gets the head job in Denver, and Russell Wilson, clock management, game management have all been in question. But make no mistake about it, uh, this football team, they've got some really strong pauses, like you pointed out, that defense is really good. Really good. Uh, some remnants of the old days there and some new guys coming in. And it ain't the orange crush, <laughs> but it's but it's pretty good. It's pretty good. good. It's good enough to be ranked where they are uh, in the National Football League. Let's take a timeout. We'll come back. We've got to flip it around to this Broncos offense that, boy, they've had some questions this year. Who's playing at quarterback? Russell Wilson's dinged up. Brett Rippon got last week's start. They're both in London. We'll see what happens there. A lot to discuss there. The Jaguars' defense has to get off the mat after giving it up late in the fourth quarter last week against the Giants. PRI Productions, the official event production company of the Jaguars, has everything you need to bring your next idea to life. Visit PRIProductions.com. We're on 1010XL and 92.5 FM, Jaguars.com, Jaguars social media as well, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Thank you for joining us today. It's Jaguars Happy Hour on the Jaguars Digital Network. Reconnect with the best version of you at Amara Med Spa, Northeast Florida's premier luxury medical spa, located in Ponte Vedra, Town Center, Avondale, St. Augustine, and Fernandina. With the most advanced injectors, estheticians, and technology, Amara Med Spa is redefining beauty. Offering services such as Botox and filler, M-Sculpt Neo, painless laser hair removal, and advanced skincare treatments. Visit theamaramedspa.com and book a complimentary consultation today. It's Ford Truck Month. Now's the time to get a great deal on the only trucks built Ford Tough. Work or play, get after it in a new Ford F-150 or Super Duty truck. Get a Ford Maverick or get after any adventure in a Ford Ranger pickup. Take advantage of our best offers on the full Ford lineup of trucks. But you better get going. These deals won't last. Get to Ford Truck Month. Some models, trims, and features may not be available or may be subject to change. See your local dealer for details. I'm driving. I joined the new Dunkin' Rewards program, and today's the day I'm going to use my points on a medium ice latte and a couple of chocolate frosted donuts. Here you go, and thanks for being a rewards member. And now I'm using those chocolate frosted donuts, kids, to get a few sweet, sweet, blissful minutes of beautiful relief from the never-ending onslaught of backseat bickering. Join new Dunkin' Rewards today. Shh. Oh, sorry. Join new Dunkin' Rewards today. Save them, stack them, use them how you want. America runs on Dunkin'. Terms apply. Thinking about your favorite whiskey or whiskey-based cocktail for this weekend's party or tailgate? Us too. While you're out shopping for supplies, don't forget to pick up a bottle of the 2022 Jaguars whiskey available at most local Jacksonville liquor stores. Not leaving the couch this weekend? No problem. You can also order a bottle online at citrusdistillersonline.com. Every bottle is made locally here in Duval. Are you suffering from shoulder pain? If you have clicking and popping in the shoulder joint, persistent pain that intensifies with use, an inability to lift your arm over your head, or a tingling, burning sensation in the shoulder, elbow, or wrist, waiting to see a doctor could make your injury worse. Baptist Health and Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute have innovative and effective treatment options available right now to relieve your pain and restore your mobility. Don't wait. Call 904-JOI-2000. Frank Frangie here. When you want barbecue in Jacksonville, you want Bono's Pit Barbecue. You can find Bono's locations all around town and on game day at TIAA Bank Field because Bono's is the official barbecue of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Bono's is currently expanding its brand with franchise opportunities throughout the Southeast and beyond. Over 70 years of authentic Southern Pit Barbecue and owning your own business are a great combo. Go to bonosbarbq.com to learn more or call 904-880-8310 today. And remember, if you don't see a pit, it ain't legit. The station that the Jaguars listen to, 1010XL. 
home of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jaguars Game Day Radio is brought to you by Vice Star Credit Union. Do good, bank better. J.P. Shadrick, Jeff Lagerman. It's Jaguars Happy Hour. The Jags about to head to London to face the Denver Broncos at Wembley. Coming up, it's a 9.30 Eastern Time kickoff. We'll go on the air with the Publix Tailgate Show at 6.30 a.m. Eastern. Brian Sexton and Mike Dempsey will have the reins here in Jacksonville of that. And then uh, countdown to kick off on the network at 8.30 Eastern time. We'll uh, hear from Jaguars owner Shad Khan. We'll uh, catch up with him Saturday in London mm-hmm. um, and all that coming up. Who's uh, doing that interview? Uh, I am. Oh. Yes. Uh, Henry Hodgson, who's the general manager of NFL UK. Uh, we'll get his thoughts on the Jaguars and what they mean to the international series moving ahead. It's his first year in that role. He got that job this summer. He's been with the NFL since, gosh, 2007 in a few different roles and started out in the World League of American Football as a PR assistant. We'll hear from him on Sunday. So a lot coming up on the pregame coming up this week. Looking forward to that. Uh, Haven't been there in a while. It's been 2019 was the last visit to Wembley. Right. Had had the COVID year and then last year the broadcast team, we did not travel. We actually called it from the the booth right here in the stadium at home. Yep. Which turned out to be just fine, and this year getting the opportunity to go back. And I think the uh, as we leave tonight, tomorrow when we land, the travel arrangements are a little bit different. The accommodations are a little bit different than what we've done in the past. So looking – well, kind of different, but then also similar, I guess you could say, right? I mean, because we're – you are – you're like big time. You, you're staying down in London. <laughs> I don't know about that. He's rubbing elbows with all the, the big timers, like you just talked about who you're interviewing. You know, you're going to be – Having drinks with Shad and the guy that's the head of the NFL over in Europe at and, noon? I don't think so, but well, eh, maybe. Well, you what's, never know. <laughs> why not? <laughs> what's the interviews over? You know, and you know. uh, and then I'll be staying with the team, and I think it's at a place that we stayed at before, the Grove. It's yeah, the out, Grove. Uh, that's right. That was gosh, what year was that that we stayed that at the was Grove? A couple years in, I think fourteen or fifteen. I yeah, think. fourteen, fifteen, it's, something like that. It's but, a fantastic resort northwest of London, near the town of Watford, and the actual old building. You used to be Queen Victoria's winter home way back in the old yeah, days. Yeah, it's, it's pretty nice setup. Got uh, got nice area where you can practice and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah. so yeah, looking forward to that. Because I think when, when the team stayed at the Grove, when we were out there, we stayed somewhere else. Yeah, the friendly a, house. Yeah, well, that was a, that was the first year. That was a totally different side of town. It wasn't the Grove. That was, okay. else, that was, a, totally, that was a long time ago. All that right, was 2013. I, yeah. That was Penny anyway. Hill, Hill Park. That was west of London. And that's what it was. That's what that was. That's what it was. Long time ago now. This is the ninth trip for the Jaguars to the UK, and there will be more. Uh, it'll of be, uh, so if it was nine missing two, so it'll be my seventh, right? Or that was, yeah, that's this right. will be number nine, this will be number seven. Yeah. For me. Correct. Yeah. So there you go. Um, I mean, you know, I've still been trying to find a fishing or a hunt spot out there in London. You know, I haven't found it well, yet. Well, in London might be tough. Outside of London... <laughs> You, you might be in luck. Hunting but I, for, but hunting I can for tell you this. Grouse or something. I have found a lot of really good pubs, JP. I have also. Yeah. yeah there, are, there are many. You're like a total pub guy. What is that supposed to mean? Um, you're like a bar fly when we go over there. That's a little aggressive. Uh, that's not aggressive. That's factual. Ding, ding. I hit that one dead on the spot. Well, they have Wi-Fi. I can get work done. They have food, and I can eat, and... <laughs> a pint or two on top of that. Like, if, if I'm not done with work. What's wrong with that? <laughs> Nothing. I'm, what are you trying to look, say? Barfly's not a bad term, JP. I think you meant it as a no, bad term. No, no, I just meant it as a factual term. Are you or are you not in the pubs often when we go to London? Well, I mean, half the events that no, we no, have no, to no, do no. are that's, at pubs. That's a yes or well, no you answer. Me to say, okay, that's, no, I'm not. No, <laughs> that's a lie. I deny. That is such a lie. I deny. That is a lie. There will no we, be no international incidents. That is a lie. You spend your your food allowance in like the first three pubs. That's a lie. That not is true. That is all right. Leave it to the NFL okay, UK Jaguar had, staff to put we, things at pubs. What do you want? I if mean, we had the ability to turn the camera around and to get a second opinion in here, okay, my man Joe Fortunato is what behind the camera over know? there. He's not down so, there. So, Joe, is, am I accurate? Yes no. or no? Oh, gosh. Here we go. What? Yes, Joe. Oh, no, we do we, have the ability to turn the cameras around. That's great. Thanks, Reed. Um, Into the microphone, no. Joe. Thanks. It um, it is not 
his first three pubs where all his money goes. Okay. It's probably the first two pubs two. Okay. Where, where all his money goes. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> hey, um, but I'm did, excited did to get back. Did you know more about Amy Winehouse before or after? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, it's part of it, man. Um, we're excited, though, to get back. I mean, so there's that, a lot of- real quick. Yeah. Typically, when we go there, there is uh, some kind of event that, that we like to go to or a concert or a sporting event, so, somehow to experience London, right? Yes. Or do we have anything planned? Yes. What do we got planned? Uh, there is a Fulham game at home at Craven Cottage in the afternoon, I believe 4.30 London time against Everton. On what day? Saturday. Saturday. And then Fulham is now in the top 10 in the Premier League. They're okay, so, well. so are you uh, are you in charge of tickets? You're the man to talk no, to about tickets? I am not. Who is? Uh, there's someone else in the building that I can tell you off the air. Are, are we going to be ta- we taken care of? Did you ask for them? Well, not yet. But, but if, you know the plane takes off in like three hours. I know, but I figured that you had us taken care of. You know there's only 20,000 seats in this place. Like it's a small place. Well, that's okay. I figured that you had us a, a, a seat. Well, you didn't I mean, ask me. I mean, you're like, you've made more friends over there in these pubs in, in a short period of time. I figured oh. you had it taken care of. The bar flies, as you call them, may not have the access to the <laughs> tickets, so maybe you're asking the wrong guy. Well, uh, uh, well if not, then uh, then I'll have to go ask somebody else. Yeah, so that's uh, Saturday afternoon. It's also the same time as the Jaguars UK pub party, which is Ooh. near Trafalgar Square. That's always fun. And, Ooh. So and that's uh, when? Uh, Saturday afternoon, same time, okay. into the evening. So and you got to make a choice, either go to that or go to the Fulham game? I think the pub party will last a while. So Are if you, you hit the soccer game first, you can go to the pub party next. Okay, cool. So well, I'm doing it. Yes, Joe. Yes, hi, Joe. Hi, hi JP. <laughs> I got something else for you, too. What do you got? Oh, we God. cheat time twice. Yeah. We did that once before. We, they turn the clocks back okay. Saturday, and then we come home, and they turn the clocks back Saturday again. We got two free hours. Two fallbacks. Really? Yeah. UK falls back Saturday night going into Sunday I, this week. I think week. that happened in 2016. Yeah. And then, and then we fall back the week after. I'm Here. so confused. Yeah. Just just sleep in. Just pay attention just to my sleep. phone and tells me what time it you is. You get an extra hour. Okay. It's, that's the whole point. Uh, looking for, uh, looking but forward. But I recommend if you're over there, if you're down in town, Logs, hit that pub party. Freddie T is going to be there. Tony's oh, going to yeah. be there. Like it's hundreds of Jaguar fans from the UK and Europe. I mean, it's oh, it's, it's more than. I mean, I've been to those before. It's, it's so more than fun. hundreds. It's it's a lot. It's really cool. Yeah, it's cool. So I, they they watch these shows all the time on on social media, our Jaguars Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube channels. Yeah, you sign more too. autographs over there than I mean, you're like celeb over there. It's pretty cool. I signed it Jeff cool Lagerman somehow. I don't know why, but bar, they, yeah, you know, they, I mean, every bar you go to, it's like everybody's like it's like when Cheers, you know, they normal walk in norm <laughs> i was like jp yeah i've been it's accused crazy. i've been accused of worse things i suppose uh let's get back to football now shall we and, well i guess we'll call it football it's been a struggle for the broncos offense they cannot get much of anything done they gave a lot of money to russell wilson before this season and Nathaniel Hackett, of course, first-year head coach, trying to work this thing out offensively. He now has a shoulder issue and a hamstring issue. Wilson didn't play last week. Brett Rippon made the start in his place. It didn't go well then either. And this offense is as good as the defense is statistically. They're about as bad on offense the other way around. 23rd in total offense, 31st on third down. They're last in the league in the red zone and the lowest points per game average in the league, just over 14 in each game. With all that going on at the quarterback position this offseason and everything that happened there, they can't get anything jump-started on offense. No, and there's there's not really been any consistency with that offense, which you know, when you typically have an offensive-minded head coach, most of the time you would expect that side of the ball to be to be a little bit more advanced, especially with a veteran quarterback like Russell Wilson, but that hasn't been the case. There has been a lot of criticism for Russell Wilson. Uh, his performance, if you actually go back and you look at his performance the last couple of years in Seattle and then also this year with Denver, it continues to go down. And that's not a trend if you're a franchise that you want to have with your – "Quote unquote franchise quarterback," because the reality is, is that you just gave him an extension with all this new money, 
which says he is your franchise quarterback. And, and if he's not playing like that, then that can become a significant problem. Now, is it health-related? Uh, I haven't seen prior to this past week where he was inactive, I have not seen anything on the injury report that would say that, hey, look, the reason for his performance is physical. So this is going to be something interesting to watch as the season moves forward for the Denver Broncos. You hope that the performance doesn't bounce back. Uh, the, when I'm talking about the performance of the Broncos' offense as a team doesn't bounce back this week in London, I can tell you that. You know, the, the Jaguars' defense right now, though, has been struggling. That's a major concern. Yeah, last couple of weeks, uh, shaky, can't find their sea legs, can't stop the run last week when it mattered in the fourth quarter. I mean, they were, what, <laughs> Dan Orlovsky put up a, a video on Twitter today, the analyst for ESPN, mm -hmm. where he went through the film, and it was, he showed eight straight plays on that four-minute drive where they pulled the left guard and ran power to the right. One of those, they play faked and did the bootleg, but mm -hmm. it was the same exact run, formation, every mm -hmm. single down on that drive, and they got into field goal range. Did he explain why when you pull that guy out to the front side there becomes a problem? Why okay. is that? When you pull somebody over to that front side, you're, you're essentially adding more gaps now because you now have another blocker on that side. And you can consistently see that the Jaguars aren't finding a guy to take the gap. Okay, somebody gets out of a gap. This is, you know, defense in the National Football League is about gap integrity. So when you bring that guard over to that side, now you have to be able to adjust and fill for a new gap that's become that number in goes place over, over there. there. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And the Jaguars defensively did not do a good job with that. They did not do a good job containing Daniel Jones. Nope. You, know, you go back to that game against the Giants because this is a copycat league. You've, you've heard me say that many times before. You've heard other people say that many times before. What the Giants did was they took what worked against the Philadelphia Eagles as far as what the Eagles did against the Jaguars defensively and what worked, which was a lot of the read option stuff. Okay, and the Eagles were able to rush the ball for over 200 yards. Well, then they also took what was successful against the Jaguars' defense from the Indianapolis Colts' perspective, which was throwing the ball and then also having tempo. So they blended, Brian Dayball blended the two almost. He's running read option, allowing the quarterback to run, but then he's also running up tempo with a mobile quarterback. Put all that together, and it made it a tough day for the Jaguars defensively. Now, for the most part, look, they were doing a great job against Saquon Barkley. But once it got to a four-minute drill for the Giants where they just needed to eat up the clock and maybe put one more score on the board, they were able to do that without any type of interference from the Jaguars defensively. They marched down the field methodically, and that's, that's like a perfect world for a four-minute drill offensively. And that was disappointing. So the Jaguars defense has to get better at key moments. Somebody's got to make a play, but most importantly, J.P., the entire team and the defense in particular needs to stop having critical mistakes. Yeah, all over the place. Thirteen penalties. I mean, in bad moments, roughing the passer. Three consecutive away. games with oh, roughing the passer, and man. then you know this past game when Lucan blitzes up the middle, he launches. Okay, he leaves his feet and launches towards the head and neck area of the quarterback, and then when he's when he gets there, he ducks his head and hits Daniel Jones right in the face mask with the crown of his helmet. That's like a double no. You can't launch. Yeah. Okay, you right. can't launch to the head and neck area, and then you can't lower your helmet to hit somebody with the crown of the helmet. So that was like a double mistake, and on top of that, I would say a triple mistake because your defense had that happen in the previous two games. Yeah, and they got an interception on the play too. And, well, and, and here's the thing, that. look. The Giants didn't score on that drive. Okay, so people say, well, that, okay, that didn't matter. Yeah, it does. It matters from a momentum mm -hmm. standpoint because when you get a takeaway, the energy rises with your football team. It rises with your fan base. It rises in the stadium. And then when it gets negated, it's like <sighs> the air gets taken out. And that's the part that you just can't have continue to happen. All right, plenty more ahead on this Jaguars defense. We'll um, see if they figured out the crossing routes as well. We'll get into that. And uh, that was from a couple of weeks ago. Uh, 
little bit of that crept up against the Giants last week, too, still. Uh, injury report, we'll take a look at a few guys that were on the list at least last week and see if they're going to get back into action. And, of course, at 5 o'clock, it's the Doug Peterson Show. We'll hear from the Jaguars head coach before the Jags head over to London to face the Broncos. This is Jaguars Happy Hour on the Jaguars Digital Network. Your hometown gate now has more ways to save. Introducing MyGate Rewards, a new loyalty program with member-exclusive savings and fuel discounts. Earn points on in-store purchases, take advantage of special offers, and save on products you love. Score free coffee, fountain drinks, pizza, and soft serve with Gates Frequent Shopper Clubs. Then use your points on savings at the pump. Download the MyGate Rewards app in the App Store today or ask a store associate for more information. Go from good to Gate. Jaguars fans, huddle up for the best defense against expensive car repairs, CarShield. Score big with the nation's number one automotive protection company, CarShield. They offer affordable plans that cover over 6,000 parts and systems in your car, truck, or SUV. Don't miss any Jaguars action this season with a car breakdown. Call the MVPs at CarShield for the best coverage ever. Call 800-471-1223. 800-471-1223. Go Jags! Jaguars fans, here's a great way to pay with pride wherever you go. Exclusively from TIAA Bank, the Jacksonville Jaguars Visa Debit Card comes with a fierce look and fantastic features, along with the convenience to make purchases online or at millions of locations worldwide. And it's yours, free, when you open a Yield Pledge checking account. Order yours today. Visit TIAABank.com slash JagsCard. TIAA Bank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC, and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Headquartered in Jacksonville, Florida, CSI Companies partners with leading organizations across the country to deliver workforce solutions. As a proud sponsor of your Jacksonville Jaguars, CSI crafts personalized operations to fuel the success of businesses, both big and small. Whether it's finding the right talent for a job or seamlessly managing a project from start to finish, CSI has over three decades of experience in getting the job done. This is your Workforce Solutions Reimagined. Visit CSICompanies.com. The Land Rover Defender story began with the simple thought of creating an exceptionally capable off-road vehicle, becoming the go-anywhere, do-anything, all-terrain machine. Today, there's a new Land Rover Defender, the toughest and most advanced Land Rover vehicle ever. From the beginning, Land Rover knew the new Defender was capable of great things. Motor Trend's 2021 SUV of the Year is just the latest example. Test drive the new Land Rover Defender today at Land Rover Jacksonville on Atlantic Boulevard or go to LandRoverJacksonville.com. Land Rover, above and beyond. Kessler Creative, proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, has the print services you need for your business. Need large banners and signs for your next promotional event? How about custom boxes to advertise your company fleet? Find out for yourself how Kessler Creative can help you stand out from the competition with eye-catching designs that are sure to impress your customers. Kessler Creative, Jacksonville, Florida. Results-driven marketing and a proud partner of Jacksonville Jaguars. Mike Dempsey and Fat Tony, Jaguars Today. All Jaguars, all NFL, all the time. 10 to noon weekdays on 1010XL. Welcome back. It's Jaguars Happy Hour, and it's Thursday. The Jaguars are headed to London to face the Denver Broncos, a battle of two and five teams at Wembley Stadium under the arch. It should be 68 degrees, maybe some rain, lows in the mid-50s. Welcome to England. That's That's what it's going to be. That's the forecast it seems to be like every day, right? Chance of rain, gray, overcast, cool. Sounds like Big Ten weather is what it sounds like to me. (laughs) It's fine. It's fine. But I'm, I'm... I think it's going to be exciting once again to be back at Wembley because uh, took a little break from it, right? Yeah, it's been a few years, and and you know the the broadcast positions there are out, kind of out in the open near the stands. They're but in it's the covered. stands. There's a roof over the stands, <laughs> which is nice, so the field is open. And I uh, look forward to being back there, England's it's national a, stadium. It's a great venue. I mean, great venue. And you want to talk about packing a lot of people in there? Yeah. Oh, I think it's officially like 86 or something for American football. It can be 90 for soccer. It's a lot. It's a lot. And it's big. May, arguably the most impressive thing is that where do they come from? And then 
Where do they go? Well, the people? Yes. Yeah, they all appear on trains out of the nowhere. The tube, right? I guess. That's it, right? Yeah, there's is that like, what they call it, the tube? There's three train lines that go in there. One is the overground, one's the international, or the uh, the national rail, and then the tube, the underground, is the other station. It's pretty wild it's right because- there. There's uh, no car parking, really. For, for a few different years, we would stay- literally in the hotel, and I think it was a Hilton, it was yep. attached almost to Wembley. Right there. I mean, it wasn't physically attached, but but literally when I when I would be riding the, the elliptical runner or something like that, it was a baseball throw to hit the stadium wall. Right across the two-lane street right there, yep. Yeah, and... The uh, uh, Broncos are staying there all week, by the way. They, they got over earlier in the week. And, uh, and all of a sudden on game day, you start to see people trickle in, and, and then they had this main thoroughfare, which is a foot traffic thoroughfare, which approaches the stadium from the train area. And we, we got a chance to go walk through that in the days when they set it up beforehand. And on game day, all of a sudden, it just turns into this, it's like an ant colony. It's like, oh, they just people everywhere. And they go back and forth. They come from the trains, and then after the game, they go back that way. And then within a matter of an hour and a half after the game, they're gone. You wouldn't think there was a game there at all. They're, they're gone. Right. You're like, where'd it go? All right. <laughs> it's like clockwork, man. It's, it's pretty amazing. It's a, it's a cool experience, and I think the coolest thing when you go over there is the number of jerseys from different teams that will be at this game because mm-hmm. these people just love football, and they have a lot of different favorites. Yeah, and maybe somebody went to the 07 Giants Broncos, or excuse me, Giants Dolphins game and got a Dolphins hat, and then three years later went to a Niners game and got a Niners shirt. And they were wearing it all at the same time. <laughs> they, that, you know, they could wear a Jets and Patriots and not realize they're in the same division sometimes. Yeah, it's that's uh, okay. It's but pretty neat. But the one thing a lot I, of Jaguar things, too. That's the way. one thing I would say is that through the years, it's it's been impressive because the first year when we went over there, you virtually saw nothing Jaguars. And then, okay, and then you started to see a little bit here and there. And then, you started to see a little bit more. Now the predominant jersey that you see on a Jaguar game day is a Jaguars jersey or a Jaguar apparel where you go back to the first year, you couldn't even barely find one. And so it has definitely grown over there. And I know that economically London is great for the football team. It, uh, it does very well over in London. And, uh, and that's a good thing because the better you do in London, the, the, the more – economically feasible things stay in Jacksonville and the Jaguars have more of a stake in this game now the league puts on the two games at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium they they went in on that stadium with that football club the Jaguars signed their own deal with Wembley so they're putting the game on they're putting everything on it is a true home game for the Jaguars uh, and that's financially as well uh, coming back. Time now logs for the injury report presented by Baptist Health and the Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute, the official sports medicine provider of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Let's touch on a couple of guys that missed last week's game. Jamal Agnew, wide receiver and kick returner, had a knee issue. He said last week in the locker room that, yeah, it's kind of a one week. We'll see how it goes. He didn't. He's positive, at least last week, that he might be able to get back and Get ready for this one. We'll see, though. And what what differences did you see in the kick and punt return game? If well, any? first and foremost, let me just kind of preface it by saying that Jamal Agnew really hasn't had that moment as a returner yet this year. Right. He's had moments as an offensive player that you went, "Wow, that was impressive." But the one thing that you miss is the consistency and also the security. When I say consistency and security, consistency in that. Jamal Agnew, if it's if there's 25 yards to be made on a return, a kick return, he's going to give you 25 yards. I don't know if you're going to necessarily get that from a Jamichael Hasty, you know, guaranteed, you know. And the experience and the trust factor with Jamal Agnew, it, you can't replace that. The guy catches the ball, he secures the ball, he's been safe with the football. Those things are nice to have. Coaches sleep well at night when they have a player – with that kind of pedigree that Jamal Agnew has because they know that they can trust them. Now, going forward, uh, I hope he's available to play. You know, we'll see. But then Shaq Griffin, who also didn't play last week, will he play this week? I hope. You know, because a healthy Shaq and a Shaq that plays well is good for this defense. When you have Chris Herndon out there, which I like Chris as a player. Excuse me, Trey. Mm -hmm. 
when you have Trey Herndon out there as a player, I like Trey. But Trey has some shortcomings. If you go back all the way to when Todd Walsh was coaching Trey Herndon and Chris Claybrooks, he would have a rotation. And it was very odd. When they were playing zone, they would have Trey Herndon out there. When they were playing man, they would try to have Chris Claybrooks out there and try to hide a little bit of that just because you didn't want offenses knowing what coverage you were in based on your personnel. But that's what they tried to do because, as we saw this past week, Trey got beat over the top with the, with the deep ball, and that's not his strong suit. So, you know, hopefully Shaq is, is back and uh, he's healthy and he's playing well because the last time he played, he didn't have a great outing at Indianapolis. Long plane ride, too. I mean, back issue, and if that's the case, you got to make sure that thing's loose when you get on the ground tomorrow. Well, the plane ride, I think, presents challenges for, for all players, players that might just have little normal bumps and bruises just because of the inflammation. You need to get up and you need to move around, but also you're trying to get a night's rest or sleep on a plane to, like you're trying to do tonight. And that's not the best night's sleep, JP. Um, right. I don't know about you, but I don't sleep on a plane particularly well. I need some assistance. Uh, <laughs> we will leave it at that. Yeah, uh, yeah you, try, you try to get good sleep, but it's hard sometimes on a plane. Your, uh, your normal schedule is interrupted a little bit. So you try to adjust. You, know, you try to catch up and maybe catch a nap when you get to London. And... Uh, but they've done, they've done it different ways. This has been the the most successful way, and so this team is doing it that way. Denver left earlier in the week. I like that because my experience is is that when a team leaves earlier in the week, they get in the mindset that this is a vacation, much like you've heard me talk about on a West Coast trip. When you leave on a Friday, now you've got downtime, and it feels like okay, we're on vacation. You're trying to find something to do. Well, when you go to London. On a Tuesday, now you're trying to figure out, hey, what are we going to do on Tuesday night? Yeah, what are we going to do on Wednesday right. night? Yeah, you know, sure. well, hey, let's do this. Let's go see this while we're there. When you travel like the Jaguars do, us leaving tonight, it's a business trip. And that's, I think, the best way to keep it. If you're looking for the MVP of the truck game, then look no further than Ford F-150. Loaded with impressive capability and designed to dominate work, play, and everything in between, this truck makes tough look easy. Your local Ford dealer, proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Our final thoughts coming up, and then at 5 o'clock, it's the Doug Peterson Show. We'll hear from the Jaguars head coach coming up. It's Jaguars Happy Hour on the Jaguars Digital Network. It's football season, and time to take your game to the next level with a Ford F-150 truck. Light up your tailgate with an available Pro Power onboard generator. And with an available 3.5-liter EcoBoost engine, you can tow just about anything you need to rule the stadium lot. Ford F-150, part of the F-Series lineup that have been the best-selling pickups for 45 straight years. Get to your local Ford store today. Proud sponsor of your Jacksonville Jaguars. At Tropical Smoothie Cafe, one taste and you're feeling good now, smiling wider now, seeing brighter now, bucket dunking now, namaste in now, popping a wheelie now, living lighter now. You're on Tropic Time now. And on Mondays, try our Jaguars Duval Delight Smoothies for $2.99. And you're roaring louder now, end zone dancing now, sipping spirit now. You're on Tropic Time now at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Committed to the team, committed to the mission. At Navy Mutual, we're committed to providing high quality life insurance to members of the military and their families. So our policies have no fine print and no military service restrictions. We don't work on commission, we're nonprofit. So we pass the savings along to our members because at Navy Mutual, our highest commitment is to you. Visit NavyMutual.org. Navy Mutual, ensuring those who serve. Reconnect with the best version of you at Amara Med Spa, Northeast Florida's premier luxury medical spa, located in Ponte Vedra, Town Center, Avondale, St. Augustine, and Fernandina. With the most advanced injectors, estheticians, and technology, Amara Med Spa is redefining beauty. 
offering services such as Botox and filler, M-Sculpt Neo, painless laser hair removal, and advanced skincare treatments. Visit the AmaraMedSpa.com and book a complimentary consultation today. Hey, I'm driving. <laughs> I joined the new Dunkin' Rewards program, and today's the day I'm going to use my points on a medium iced latte and a couple of chocolate frosted donuts. Here you go, and thanks for being a rewards member. And now I'm using those chocolate frosted donuts, kids, cool. to get a few sweet, sweet, blissful minutes of beautiful relief from the never-ending onslaught of backseat bickering. Join New Duncan Rewards today. Shh. Oh, sorry. Join New Duncan Rewards today. Save them, stack them, use them how you want. America runs on Duncan. Terms apply. Jaguars fans, huddle up for the best defense against expensive car repairs, CarShield. Score big with the nation's number one automotive protection company, CarShield. They offer affordable plans that cover over 6,000 parts and systems in your car, truck, or SUV. Don't miss any Jaguars action this season with a car breakdown. Call the MVPs at CarShield for the best coverage ever. Call 800-471-1223. 800-471-1223. Go Jags! When Jaguars news breaks, you'll hear about it first on 1010XL, home of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Welcome back. It's Jaguars happy hour, and the Jaguars are facing the Denver Broncos. It's week eight at Wembley Stadium, London. It's a 1.30 London time kickoff, 9.30 a.m. Sunday, total leather. Actually, 9.30 and 30 seconds officially total leather time. Mm-hmm. Sunday morning. I, I like the idea of watching the NFL football while eating breakfast. That's, uh, that's a cool thing. You kind of get up and make waffles and omelets and bacon and have coffee and or, or big spread. How about this? You could get a, yeah, a big English breakfast before you head to the stadium on Sunday. Beans and toast and eggs on toast and uh, sausage yeah. and uh, I, brown sauce, scones. I, I got to say, I am, we, we got it made in America now when it comes from a food standpoint. And I know you're a pub guy. I wouldn't recommend the scrambled eggs over there, though. That's not that's good. My point it's bad business. is yeah. that Oof. our food Eesh. that we have in the in the States, and, and this is just my opinion, so all the, the UK Jag fans don't get upset. They're going to tweet you. I know. I think we have some of the best food that there is. And uh, the one benefit when you travel with the team, JP, and you stay with the team at the hotel is that you get to eat their food a lot of times. Like I know you're in London rubbing elbows with uh, with all the celebs and such. Yeah, there will be no caviar. Okay, and you're eating caviar no, and, and and snails and all that that's other stuff. That's escargot. Yeah, that's exactly. French. That's snails. the other country. That's a two-hour trip. Yeah, but it, it, that's where you go. And that's the people you, you know, and then you have champagne and all that kind of stuff, okay, and I like the fact that they can eat with the team and, and they bring like their own chef's food over there. So they're eating their stuff, more normal food, normal for us. I like that. I like American food. I do. And I'm sorry, but there's been a couple places that we've been to in, in London, Joe, right? That been well, pretty good. Remember the first year, okay, uh, at the place near um, – uh, the hotel that we stayed at, it was yeah. the Windmill Pub, and they had beef rib. They had beef pie. rib. It was like a beef rib in a Pot pie. in a in a bowl yeah. that had the little breading over the top, and yeah. it was it was fantastic. And who found that place? Me. No, no, that was me. What are you talking about? I ordered it first, and then everybody ordered it, and they were out of them two days later. Like mm-hmm. we're there all week. I'm like, I I shouldn't have told anybody. Uh, who, this who, beef rib who, pie. Who? No, you didn't do anything. Thank you very much, JP. I was one of the first ones. To, I was the first you were one. To one go of there. the first ones because I, I was the first. I was the first one to go there, and then you, and then all of a sudden it was like the next night it was packed with yeah, Jaguars. Funny staff. how that works. Way to go, Logs. It was. It was ruined. It. It was my discovery. We haven't been back though because we I changed know. hotels. After. That was good. Yeah. That was really good. But I will say that. Uh, it's a lot easier to find really good food here, just because we kind of know what to look for. You know, I remember the, my first trip overseas, JP, years ago, just to give you a quick story and to not bore you. Years ago, I went over to Germany and NFL Europe. Yes. And was doing games over there for Fox. Go over there, and, and I was in uh, Berlin. And uh, wow, it was weird, weird 
city. Okay, at that time because you know you the wall was down, but you still had kind of this separation of the city, and one side of it was still the old school communist kind of feel, and then the other side was you thought you were in America, it was the West. Yeah, sure. it was the Western mm-hmm. side. The people on the side we were staying at, which was on the old communist side, would walk down the streets with their head down, and they're wearing grays and dark colors, and wouldn't even make eye contact with you on the West. It was like, hey, you know, it was it was cool. But I'll never forget the first time I went to a restaurant in Berlin, and it was on that old part of the city, the communist side, and I ordered something, and it sounded it sounded like it was going to be like an open face burger. With a with an egg on top, and I'm thinking, man, that's good fried egg hamburger, right? Comes out, and the meat is raw. The egg is raw. I'm going, the heck is this? You wanted protein, you got it. I was like, somebody actually eats this stuff over here? Are you kidding me? Mm. Anyway, I was like, um. Uh, can somebody guide me to a place where I can get some American food? There's a McDonald's down the road, sir. It's very different. By the way, they have them over there, too. They do. Uh, fish and chips, though. Got to be careful, JP. <laughs> just a little warning. Okay? They can make you gassy. So just be careful of the fish and chips. Okay, Logs. <laughs> Thanks for the tip. Appreciate it. Just a that. little warning. <laughs> Hey, uh, I don't know why it is, but uh, yeah. Another football thought here on uh, the Jaguars' defense. Certainly two weeks ago, and I'm curious how they improved, if at all, in this last week against the crossing routes. They gave them up against Indy all game long to Matt Ryan, who has since been benched in Indy, by the way. That's another side story. Oof. How did they do last week in that regard, or was it much of an issue against the Giants? It wasn't much of an issue. Uh, the passing game really wasn't a big issue against the Giants. It was the legs of Daniel Jones and then the four-minute drill, Barkley kind of getting rolling and eventually getting over 100 yards there at the end. So how do you know if it's fixed? Well, you're going to get tested. Here's what happened against the Colts. You didn't you didn't match up very well. When I say match up, you weren't getting up in the face of the receivers against a team that you can do that against because you you shouldn't have been scared of their speed or their athleticism or any of that. And you didn't do that. And then you were playing some combo coverage where you're playing a zone on one side, a man on the other side. And if you're going to do that, then you've got to be really, what I say, sound on your fundamentals and on the understanding of if something happens to where your zone now, one guy leaves the man cover or the zone side and goes over to the other side because it's man Okay, there's not anybody over there waiting for him. You have to go. You so your zone kind of becomes man. You got to go, right? Go quick. Go run. And there was a little bit of confusion in that. So I didn't see the Jaguars play a lot of that combo zone man coverage this past week against the Giants. And so will they try to do that against the Broncos? Probably not what you want to try to do against a Broncos offense that's struggling a little bit. You probably want to, as Doug talked about earlier in the week, he talked about the way we need to look at, take a real strong look at what we're doing defensively sometimes as an offense. When we're not having great success, we try to simplify things. Could the Jaguars' defense simplify this week against the Broncos in uh, expecting a different result? Maybe. We'll have to wait and see. So it's week eight. The Denver Broncos and the Jacksonville Jaguars, both teams two and five, both teams on four game losing skids. The Jaguars were two and one to open the season. They are not now after this four game skid. It's the Jaguars' ninth visit to London all time. It's the second ever for the Denver Broncos. They last came in 2010. It's been a while. And, hey, it's a matchup of teams that are really trying to figure this thing out. We mentioned the, the Broncos' defense, strong, highly rated across the board. The Denver offense, not so much. The Jaguars move the ball well on offense, can't finish in the red zone, at least most times they haven't this year. Uh, and the defense has had some issues the last two weeks through the past two weeks ago on the ground last week. What are you feeling about this game Sunday at Wembley? Uh, well, I'm feeling this and that uh... – because this is our, our last segment in this hour, is correct? It? Okay, yeah. I'm excited because you're calling the game for Westwood One. I am. The play-by-play guy, yeah, yeah. J.P. Shadrick, and you're working with Mike Mayock, That's who right. is one of my heroes. 
So congratulations to you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to thank Bryce Harper for the two-run homer in the last of the eighth inning in game number five of the NLCS because that sent the Phillies to the World Series. And, uh, you know, um, Tom McCarthy, who was scheduled to call the game on Westwood One, is the Phillies radio announcer, one of them. So he's staying back to do the World Series. So it opened up an opportunity. It worked out. And uh, thanks a lot to the Jaguars brass, uh, Chad Johnson, Patrick Cavanaugh, the whole crew, everybody here for – uh, you know, opening it up, giving the green light to do yeah, it. I'll still awesome. have some pregame duties for Jaguars radio on Sunday, but then uh, once that final hour hits, I'll be over at Westwood. Well, so. and, I, and I know you're, look, this ain't your first rodeo. Uh-huh. Okay. It's your first Jaguars game, though, that you get to be a play by play guy. Oh, uh, huh? not at all. Remember? Oh, that's I right. A, you had to sub. I've done two. Yeah, I you did had to 2017 sub. in right. the last week of the season. <laughs> At Tennessee, mm-hmm. and Frank was sick. Frank was sick, yeah. And so I came in for a quarter and a half, and Yannick Ngakwe had a fumble return touchdown. Yeah. The Jags lost that game. Well, they lose many games in Nashville, but they lost that one. And then uh, in 2019, I sat in on Talk Sport Radio in the U.K., and I did the fourth quarter play-by-play of that That's game. That's right. And the Jaguars turned it over their last four possessions oh, in a boy. row. In so you game. were bad luck. Woof. All right, JP, if, if the turnovers start, flowing freely <laughs> I'm going to turn around and look at you and go what the heck JP it's all your fault get out of here but now have a great broadcast I'm fired up man thank you very much Mike Mayock is, is going to be a great guy to work with he is uh he does his homework he's a hard-working guy and you'll you guys will do a great job yeah excited for but that. don't listen to them <laughs> JP, okay listen to me and Frank and Baselli on the reg- regular Jaguars broadcast but if you want to listen, there are many ways to listen to Westwood, but uh, we'll, we'll leave that oh, to you. Yeah, Westwood internet. One's website? Okay, yeah, westwoodonesports.com. Yeah, yeah. uh, you can listen on Alexa. Just say, listen to Westwood One, and they'll pull that up. Sirius, some- X, Sirius, XM, X, uh, NF, Sirius XM NFL Radio also. There's a few different ways. Affiliates all over the country. Yeah, it's cool. Good. Very cool. Be nice. Thank yeah. you, Lux. Appreciate yeah, no, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to hearing. I'm, I'm going to try to get a recording of it. So maybe it'll go to podcast. Do they podcast games? No. They put up highlights. They uh, don't do the whole game. Well, I know how to get a copy of it. I, I, am, I also do, and I'll make sure you have it. Thank you. Thank you. Because uh, in, in, the, in the boss man at Westwood One, mm-hmm. okay, what's his name? Howie Dinneroff. Okay, Howie's awesome. Yes. And uh, Howie's a good dude. I got a chance to talk with him at length in Canton. And uh, I know that he's a big fan of yours, so cool stuff. Cool stuff. Yeah, excited. Uh, and excited for all the events this weekend. We're excited to get to the United Kingdom uh, tomorrow morning. Okay, now, JP, just real quick. <laughs> real quick. Okay. okay. You're giving you, me a lot of advice today. You have Doug. significant game day responsibilities I now. I am aware. Thank okay, you. With our broadcast. That I don't anyway? And also, no, and now this added one with Westwood One. Okay, so you're going to need to be on your game which means you can't be Barfly 2.0. Oh, I know this. Unsweet nice tea in bed by 9 p.m. for me. Okay. All weekend. You know me. Okay. That's right. Just, just you know. Okay. And, and just remember. What else you, do you want? When you're eating that pudding, yes. not too much of it. Okay. Thanks for the tip. I appreciate that. And I'm not going to say what the name of yeah, it is. Uh, somebody else Like some other people did. we know. We're good on that, I think. <laughs> uh, what do you want to hear from the head coach coming up? Uh, I want to hear about how you can get a team turned around and stop making some mistakes that hurt your your production. And that's that's got to be mission control number one for this football team this week is to can you continue to try to fix the fixable, which are the self inflicted wounds, penalties, turnovers, red zone issues. Been pretty good as far as protecting the ball, but defensively they've got to get back to to getting the ball back from the opponent to help their offense out, and it's a big momentum thing. All right, the uh, Jaguars and the Denver Broncos coming up Sunday at Wembley Stadium. If you're going, we'll look forward to seeing you in a few days in London. If not, listen on Jaguars Radio coming up this Sunday morning. Coming up next, it's the Doug Peterson Show on the Jaguars Radio Network. This is Jaguars Happy Hour on Jaguars Radio.
Welcome to the Doug Peterson Show. Brought to you by the Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles. J.P. Shadrick and former Jaguar Jeff Logaman discuss the latest Jaguars news with the head coach. The Doug Peterson Show starts right now. And welcome in. It is Thursday. It is week eight. It is the Doug Peterson Show. J.P. Shadrick, Jeff Logaman, and Jaguars head coach Doug Peterson about to hop on the plane and head over to jolly old England to face the Denver Broncos, battle of two and five teams, and a good chance to get on track, good chance to... Get away for a few days together as a team and try to get this thing turned around. Yeah, you're absolutely right. This is a great opportunity for us, um, you know, to get things on track. Um, and, and, we're, and we're not that far off. That's the thing that is, uh, uh, I think, encouraging for me is that we're not far off. And, and uh, our guys understand. They're, they're disappointed. They're mad, uh, which they should be. Um, because these last two weeks, we feel like we've we've kind of given the games away. You know, it's it's not necessarily teams have beaten us. We've kind of beaten ourselves from time to time, and and you know, it's all the things that we keep we keep talking about. And you know, we've we've got to do our part as coaches to make sure that they're well prepared, and then and then the players go play. Well, the the plays that you talk about about beating yourselves this past game. You know, you fumbled the five yard line going in. You have a a personal foul roughing the passer again, even though they don't get any points about that situation it's still a momentum swinging play that goes the other direction exactly exactly right and, and you know that on that play it was an, it was an interception it was a turnover and and you know offensively we get the ball up around the 25 30 yard line at that point and and who knows what happens after that you know but you know listen these are these guys they keep fighting they keep battling um you know and i'm the type of guy too that i i, I don't like to necessarily kind of harp on all the negative i, I got to stay positive with these guys and encourage them because you know they're busting their tails during the week in practice and then ultimately in the games yeah messaging i think is critical from from a coaching staff when you're in the midst of a four game losing streak and one thing that can happen i'm sure you're trying to protect against sometimes guys try to do too much once you've had some lack of success so how do you prevent that from happening guys trying to do too much well I, I think you just got to continue to just make them aware of that you know in, in that point and I think from a coaching staff too you know we can even scale back and in, in from a from a game plan you know perspective and just sort of you know take things back to uh you know maybe training camp or the first part of the season that that where we had success and and just you know allow these guys still to play free to play fast uh, you know, play play with uh, you know great reckless abandon, so to speak, physicality, all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, understand that you know we've got to eliminate some of these mistakes in order in order for us to win these games. Doug Peterson with us on the Doug Peterson Show. Let's get to the big news earlier in the week. James Robinson traded to the New York Jets. What went into it? And uh, take us through that move. Well, you know, first of all. Um, I just appreciate James. You know, I had a short time that I got to know him. You know, he was coming off that injury and he battled all off season to, to get himself in position to help us and, and the way he worked during training camp and you know, just a great kid. You know, he's a he's a quiet, uh, the, the kind of the, the quiet kid and uh, got to know him just a little bit and so uh, you know I, I'm excited for him number one you know obviously we know the Jets situation and, and they had lost a couple of running backs there at least one and that we know of and so they needed they needed some help and and uh, so he, he gets to go up there and be the guy you know and, and uh, it, it it does you know um, I don't want to say it affects us but we do lose a good player number one but at the same time you know, I look at it like it's a it's a it's a win win because he gets a chance to go play, uh, do the things that he's very capable of doing, and then at the same time, you know, we get the resources and draft picks, you know, in the future. Uh, you've said in the past that uh, you guys are at your best when both running backs are healthy, and now he's gone. How does that rotation work for you going forward with Jermichael Hasty and Snoop Connor in the backfield? Yeah, I think that's just it. You know, we we like where Jermichael's coming and how he's been producing and and uh, been effective. And then and then you know Snoop, you know, is a, is a guy we drafted, we liked in the draft, and and he's he's really proven in practice that you know he's capable of of taking on a little bit more of that load. So you know it's a great opportunity for him. It's a great opportunity for all those backs and and. You know, obviously, we know what what Travis is capable of doing, and and uh, we've got to keep him coming and and uh, keep him on, you know, uh, at the forefront of everything that we do. But you know, it's still going to be sort of a running back by committee. I don't think you can get through an NFL season without having two, possibly three guys to do that. And so we're looking forward to to working with those three. You mentioned ATN. It does help when he is starting to really turn it on here in the middle part of the season. 
It is, and, and it's a credit, too, I think, to the offensive line, tight ends, the guys that are receivers that have been blocking for him, and he's got such a great burst of speed once he hits a hole, and, you know, uh, it's just, it, it is, it's a, you, you never know when he's going to break that long run, uh, that's that's the that's the neat thing about it, and, um, you know, and just love everything about it, love his work ethic and, and what he brings to, uh, to our offense. I want to talk about two plays in particular with Travis, one good play, one play that you probably would like to have him see it differently, the 49-yarder we'll start with. The way that he set up the Cam Robinson block, which you had an unblocked defender, which I'm sure you weren't expecting in that situation, the way he set it up, Cam was able to get to. That was an absolute thing of beauty. It was, and, and you know we talk about you know setting defenders up for our offensive linemen when they're in space. We talk about it on screens. We talk about all our all our perimeter. You know we call transportation type runs and. And he did a great job of dipping inside and really stopping the feet of both defenders. And then, you know, Cam was able to kind of, you know, use his right hand, I think, to kind of knock the first guy down and then and then work himself up to the second guy. And just, you know, Cam's such a tremendous athlete anyway, and, and things like that really don't bother him. And uh, he did a nice job. But that, that run, to be able to set up that one particular block, uh, was a thing of beauty. And it's just, it's an innate, you know, sort of, um, instinct that that Travis has, you know, uh, as a ball carrier. Yeah, I first of all also credit uh, Cam Robinson gotten it out, kind of dinged his shoulder up a little bit in the game, and and continues on right the play that I'm sure that he'd like to have back. Much talked about fourth down play where you don't make the sneak, but the third down play before, which is a wildcat look, if Travis follows Cam on that play, uh, there's a lot of green. You know, sometimes, uh, you know. Um, it's how guys learn you know it's really how guys learn and and um you know it is unfortunate because we got stopped right there on that drive but but he he'll learn from that and and the next time we get an opportunity you know he's going to make that play and and you know it's it's something too that I keep talking to the offense about and really to the entire football team is you know they they understand that what my mentality is in games and and I'm going to be you know as aggressive as I can and, and and you know I think it's a credit to our players that that you know how they play during the game really affects if we go for it on fourth down or not and you know yeah sometimes sometimes we're going to hit them and then sometimes we're not but the ones we don't they're they're great opportunities to learn from let's move it forward now to the denver broncos and the jacksonville jaguars at wembley stadium this sunday in london the denver defense one of the highly rated groups in the nfl they are second in total defense first in yards per play 15th against the run second against the pass and go on all day i mean third best scoring defense in the nfl i'm sure it shows up on film also that those numbers just don't lie thanks for making me feel better <laughs> That's <laughs> what it is. Uh, it is. No, listen, these, these guys are really good. They fly around, um, you know, and, and it's, it's again, it's a, it's a unit that is uh, very similar to the L.A. Chargers, very similar to the Philadelphia Eagles. It's that type of structure, that type of back end, you know, coverage unit. And so, we, obviously, we have experience going against you know uh, that already this season. Um, but yeah, these guys are they're they're stout and physical. They run well up front. You know, Chubb is one of the better outside backer you know type guys. Browning is the guy they're going to miss, I think, on the edge. And um, or oh, he's really good, Browning. When he he's is, playing, he he's good really player. good. He's a good player. And then you know, Sertain in the back end. I mean, he is a really really good young. I know he was think I believe in the Tyson Campbell draft and. You know, he's a really good corner, and, and he's going to be a great corner in this league for a long time. So they've got the pieces back there uh, on defense. It's going to take, uh, you know, great effort by our guys, all 11 guys on offense, to, uh, you know, attempt to move the football. Offensively, they're still trying to find their way. Uh, got injuries at quarterback. You know, what do you expect them to be on offense? Because – from your defensive perspective, I almost saw a blended game plan that Dayball approached your defense with. He took a little bit of the Philly, you know, game plan, the RPO stuff, and then the tempo from the Indianapolis loss. He kind of put them together for a game plan against your defense. He did, and and you know we expect um, going into it that, that that Russell will play. You know, I mean we gotta we gotta you know get ready for that, but. Um, you know, we know how, how mobile he is and he can beat you with his legs as well. And, you know, you got to be ready for that. You got to be ready for some of that zone read. And, and, um, you know, even if, if, you know, Ripian plays, I think there's some, some athleticism there too, that, that they can, they can take and use. And, 
And, uh, you know, we've got to learn from that and, and really, you know, on defense, you know, just focus in on our jobs and do do what we're asked to do and, and, and try to get these quarterbacks on the ground because, you know, they're, they're getting more athletic at that position. Uh, teams are utilizing them more. You can see us on offense. We're using Trevor a little bit more with his legs, and um, you know, again, it's just going to be a it's going to be an all out effort. Final thought with you going across to London, logistics, uh, the the practice, the facility, everything going on a little bit different this week. Obviously, uh, how do you get the team ready for a trip like this? You've you've done this trip before back in the uh, not to say the old days, but back uh, turning back the clock a little bit. Yeah, you know, and and I tell you what, we've we've got a crew of, of a team of people here in Jacksonville with the organization that listen. This is not Jacksonville's first time over there either, so they've they've really got this thing down to a. Uh, to an art, you know, and, and really down to the minute as far as when we take off, when we land, and and all of that, and so it's it's pretty seamless for us. You know, we're going to get the bulk of our work done here uh, in Jacksonville, which we've done, and on Wednesday, and obviously today, Thursday, and getting it. Uh, getting it gone, and then we get on the plane tonight and go over uh, and land Friday morning. We keep Friday rolling right into meetings and, and our, our you know our red zone type day on Friday, and give the guys some time too to kind of maybe experience the city on Friday after practice. You know, and just some of the guys haven't been over there before, and you know just just relax and unwind. It's a Friday can be a long hard day from the, the the time change and all that but you know it's just um our, we have a we have a great group of people that have put a lot of a lot of hard work in and and um you know we're ready to go and get on this plane and and, and try to come back with a win yeah friday's a good nap day and by the way if you if you need any place any kind of you know uh, visitor guy jp here is big over there been he, there a he's, time or two yeah he's like he's hasselhoff big hasselhoff big in europe <laughs> he is big in uh, europe. yeah P- pub guide Pub Guide Central. Hey, hey, pub Guide. All right, there you go. There you go. I can't confirm nor deny uh, that. <laughs> uh, we'll see you on the plane, Coach, and we'll talk yeah. to you after a win in London. How about Perfect. That? Thank you. Good Head Coach you. Doug Peterson with us. This is the Doug Peterson Show on the Jaguars Radio Network. Jaguars fans, here's a great way to pay with pride wherever you go. Exclusively from TIAA Bank, the Jacksonville Jaguars Visa Debit Card comes with a fierce look and fantastic features, along with the convenience to make purchases online or at millions of locations worldwide. And it's yours, free, when you open a Yield Pledge checking account. Order yours today. Visit TIAABank.com slash JagsCard. TIAA Bank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC, and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's football season. And time to take your game to the next level with a Ford F-150 truck. Light up your tailgate with an available Pro Power onboard generator. And with an available 3.5-liter EcoBoost engine, you can tow just about anything you need to rule the stadium lot. Ford F-150, part of the F-Series lineup that have been the best-selling pickups for 45 straight years. Get to your local Ford store today. Proud sponsor of your Jacksonville Jaguars. Jaguars fans are gearing up and saving big at Fanatics.com, the world's largest collection of officially licensed fan gear from all the leagues, teams, and Jaguars players you love. Shop the most trusted brands, exclusive designs by Fanatics, and autograph collectibles from today's biggest stars. Join Fanatics Rewards today and earn fan cash on every purchase. Shop now and get today's special offer. Fanatics.com, officially licensed everything. You're beyond busy. Between work and the kids, the dogs and the cat, let us help. With Publix Delivery powered by Instacart, you'll get the items you need from the store you know. Just shop online, select the time you'd like your order delivered, and grocery shopping is done, giving you more time to take care of everything else. Publix Delivery, powered by Instacart. Visit Publix.com slash delivery to shop now. That's Publix.com slash delivery. Item prices vary from in-store prices. Service fees may apply. Available in select zip codes. Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. Welcome back. The Doug Peterson Show continues right now. J.P. Shadrick, Jeff Logman, our thanks to head coach Doug Peterson jumping in as we get ready to hop on the plane to London. The Jaguars and the Broncos coming up at Wembley Stadium this Sunday. It's a 9.30 a.m. Eastern time kickoff. Glad you're with us on the Jaguars radio network today and on Jaguars Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube at Jaguars.com. Well, it's a four-game losing skid. It's, uh, you know, there's obviously going to be some frustration around that and the way they've played. It had these mistakes and self-inflicted penalties and things going on, but 
you just got to keep grinding and keep moving. They're right there on the verge of some of these wins. You just got to uh, keep keep fighting the fight. Well, and I appreciate what Doug is. The one thing about him is that he's incredibly consistent. You know, and we've had the opportunity to see that consistency throughout training camp and then also throughout the regular season. And I think if you're a coach, if you change the way you are, then the players kind of wonder, wait a minute, what's going on? And so I don't expect Doug to handle it any different, but you still have to be able to to teach and to keep reinforcing the message, especially – when it comes to those self-inflicted wounds because they continued again, and at some point you got to stop them if you're going to expect to win. His reaction when I kept reading off the Broncos' defensive statistics was telling. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let, well, let me bring this up because as soon as he walked into the studio, right. I mean, literally, we didn't say a word. And he's like, you guys seen their defense? <laughs> right. Oh, my God, the Broncos' defense. I mean, he was talking about their defense before we even asked the question. Yeah. I so, mean, that's how impressed he is with this Broncos' defense. And and he said that uh, you know, arguably one of the, the best that they'll face this year. And that's high compliment now because – Philly's got a really good defense now, and they've been playing pretty good. But he knows it, you know, right in the midst of the preparation. You turn on the film, and they've got a really good, talented back end with guys up front that can play. And it's a, it's a defense that's been keeping the Broncos in game while their offense has been a little off, yeah. to say the least. And let's touch on that. That's a big question going into the week, at least. Is Russell Wilson going to be ready to go this week, or is it Brett Rippon for a second week in a row? They've got to prepare for us. Well, here, here's what I think, and this is not any reflection of what Doug said to us or anything. This is an international game, okay? International game with an international spotlight with a quarterback who likes the spotlight and Russell Wilson. I'd say. I think there's going to be a uh, – he will find a way to play in this ball game. I will say this, though, about uh, at least historically, the pitch at Wembley can be a bit slippery. Uh, the footing can be the what? A, a little bit odd. The pitch. The pitch. The field is what they call it. Uh, okay, it why, 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 why did you use that term, the pitch? Because that's what they call soccer fields. The pitch. Uh, I didn't know that. You didn't know that? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, the pitch. That, that's why I was asking for clarification. Because it has a pitch, has a crown. That's what they Okay. Got. Yeah. All right, cool. Either way, but it can be a bit slippery. So for a, a quarterback who likes to run around with a hamstring with issue, a hammy. Uh, is that the best combination? I don't know. Uh, the one thing I do like about this week, and having done it many different ways and have having felt the vibe that comes from doing it different ways, I like the concept of traveling on a Thursday today versus traveling earlier in the week. I'm going to say that again. Yeah. Uh, sometimes when a team travels early, they think it's a, a vacation, which in fact it's a business trip. Now Doug said that you know guys are going to have you know a night one free night of free time and and obviously you need to be responsible when you have that that free time. But it's not an entire week of hey you know what let's go down and see. Abbey Road and all these other cool places. I mean, I mentioned Abbey Road because that's near and dear to our yeah. producer's heart, Mr. Joe Fortunato. He loves visiting Abbey Road. Correct. So there's a lot to uh, get done, but then at the end of the day, there is a football. We've seen this in the past over there. Uh, kind of rear its ugly head, the uh, the weekend events and things that happened, um, yes, in the past. So let's uh, keep that on the on the down this Knocking year. Knocking on wood there, JP. We don't need anything like we've seen in the past. No, it has not been uh, particularly good over the years as a whole. So, all right, uh, two and five teams going at it. Both teams on four-game losing skids. Uh, the offense in Denver hasn't done much of anything. Defense certainly has. The Jaguars on offense are moving it, but just certain situations can't have some fits and starts in the red zone and then the short yardage and things. It's just kind of they got to figure out a way. Well, and you know, we had a, a little conversation there after we were wrapping up with Doug, and, and, I, and I told him this, that I love watching the design of some of the offensive plays. I mean, some of the things that they're – that they're doing because it's Doug, it's Press Taylor, it's the offensive line coach, it's Mike McCoy, it's Jim Bob Cooter, the passing game coordinator. I mean, all of these guys are contributing to a game plan that there's plays that are are being made, but there's also plays that need to be made. 
for this team to be able to take that next step. But it's so fun to watch because they are doing such a great job of game planning as an offense. Wait until they hit their stride. Mm. I mean, seriously, wait until they hit their stride. Wait until they fully understand what they can be if they will make the all the plays that are there. And then defensively, this football team, even though the Broncos are not a monster offensive team, the defense has had some issues over the last couple of weeks. They need to get them rectified because I can guarantee you one thing. Denver's going to utilize some of the same plays that the Jaguars have struggled with over the last couple of games. And it's a Nate Hackett revenge game, too. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> no? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say that. You know, Nathaniel Hackett, the last time he was here, he was fired by Doug Marone. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But it wasn't fired by the, the Jaguars. Maybe he was the, fired by the, Doug Marone. The cat head will incite some things inside of him or something. I don't know. Maybe well, not. Look, I can, course, t- I'm I'm I can tell you this. Nathaniel Hackett has got a lot more to worry about <laughs> yeah, the way right, things are absolutely. going in Denver because the scrutiny that is happening with him, it's pretty pretty intense. We'll take a timeout. We'll get into that Jaguars offense matchup this week against a really highly rated Denver Broncos defense and see how the quarterback can progress moving ahead. It's the Doug Peterson Show on Jaguars Radio. On the road, there's a thin line between safety and tragedy. Don't cross it. Give law enforcement, first responders, and service professionals the space to safely do their jobs. When you see flashing lights, move over a lane or slow down 20 miles per hour below the posted speed limit. See lights? Move over, Florida. Brought to you by the Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles and the Florida Highway Patrol. Your hometown gate now has more ways to save. Introducing MyGate Rewards, a new loyalty program with member-exclusive savings and fuel discounts. Earn points on in-store purchases, take advantage of special offers, and save on products you love. Score free coffee, fountain drinks, pizza, and soft serve with Gate's frequent shopper clubs. Then use your points on savings at the pump. Download the MyGate Rewards app in the App Store today, or ask a store associate for more information. Go from good to Gate. Jacks fans, sign up for ESPN Plus to see Trevor Lawrence and the Jaguars take on Russell Wilson and the Broncos across the pond at London's Wembley Stadium Sunday, October 30th. ESPN Plus gives you access to nonstop NFL action all season long with live games, originals, highlights, and more. After you sign up, be sure to log into your device with your ESPN account to stream on your TV and other devices. Visit ESPNPlus.com slash NFL for more details. Are you suffering from shoulder pain? If you have clicking and popping in the shoulder joint, persistent pain that intensifies with use, an inability to lift your arm over your head, or a tingling, burning sensation in the shoulder, elbow, or wrist, waiting to see a doctor could make your injury worse. Baptist Health and Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute have innovative and effective treatment options available right now to relieve your pain and restore your mobility. Don't wait. Call 904-JOI-2000. Welcome back. The Doug Peterson Show continues right now. Welcome back to the Doug Peterson Show presented by the Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles. J.P. Shadrick with Jeff Lagerman. Our thanks to the head coach, Doug Peterson, joining us in the first segment each and every week. The Jaguars and the Broncos coming up at Wembley this Sunday. It's a 9.30 a.m. Eastern time kickoff. We'll go on air on the network at 8.30 with Countdown to kick off and get you ready for that game. And uh, it's a battle of two and five teams. It's the Jaguars offense that is moving the football fairly well between the 20s. Logs, they can uh, they can move the ball, but the uh, red zone has left a lot to be desired. They've had some key situational things that haven't gone right for them this year. I mean, as a whole, the uh, the Jaguars on offense are middle of the pack in the league. Uh, they're running the ball. Yards per carry is pretty high. But you just got to, in those key moments, make throws and hit a guy in stride or, you know, just haven't 
not it's not clean all the way through yet. Well, and I, well, I, I would say they're not hitting on all cylinders yet. Consistency, you want to have a little bit more consistency week to week. You know, the Texans game obviously was uh, one of those blips that's really far down on the radar. And uh, but impressive to me. I mean, four hundred and fifty some odd yards of offense. Your third down percentage was high once again. The red zone, though, is something that you want to be better at. You know, they have three commandments on offense. Have you? Do you? Can you rattle them off, JP? I'll, I'll <laughs> Go ahead. Quiz here. Okay. <laughs> Here's the three offensive commandments that Doug Peterson has and Press Taylor has. Number one, protect the football. Okay, they didn't do a perfect job of that against the Giants because they fumbled at the five-yard line going in, Travis Etienne did. So that's one area you didn't do a great job in. Create explosives. You actually did a pretty good job with explosive plays, especially especially against a, a challenging defense. But with a challenging defense typically comes opportunities. Weak Martindale's defense plays a lot of man. It gives you a lot of opportunities for big plays. The Jaguars were able to make some. You'd like to see a little bit more than what they had. The last one, which is great situational offense. Situational offense means fourth down success, red zone offense, tight red area, all of those things that kind of make the difference. Good two-minute drill. All of those things make a big difference in offensive success. And I would say that if you looked at the categories – You had the explosive. You didn't protect the ball perfectly. You always have a little leeway with that category protecting the ball if the defense is taking the ball away well, but the defense has hit a dry spell at taking the ball away. And then that last category, great situational offense, that's an area that they didn't excel at this past game. Jaguars overall on third down this year, 11th in the league, and then 7 of 17 on fourth. That's been uh, a topic throughout the week of the, the fourth down calls. And hey, It's Doug Peterson. It goes back to the 2017 season with the Eagles. That was when it really kind of came into the limelight that he was going to be aggressive in these fourth and short situations, and most notably, of course, on the Philly special in the Super Bowl. But uh, that's kind of carried over, and a lot of other – offensive play callers are being a little more aggressive around the league, not just here in Jacksonville. That's more of a trend league-wide now. It is, and analytics is a big part of all of sports now. And that, one of the reasons why I asked Doug the question when I brought up Travis Etienne, I, I brought up the good play, the long run where he set yeah. up Cam Robinson's block beautifully. I mean, that was that was a big-time material play right there by Travis Etienne. And then I brought up – you know, a play that wasn't so good that it is a great opportunity for Travis to learn from, which was the third and one, which was before the fourth and one that's so talked about. And that's where Travis, if he just follows Kim Robinson on the outside, it could have been possibly a score, if not a very big play. And you wouldn't even down. have been having a conversation about what do you do on fourth down? Do you uh, go ahead and take the points and kick a field goal, or do you run a different play instead of the the quarterback sneak? The other thing I will add on that fourth and one play that they tried to run a quarterback sneak, a timeout there probably wouldn't have been a bad idea because when you came up to the line of scrimmage, the many other times that you ran the quarterback sneak, the Giants left one of the A-gaps open. So Trevor could squeeze into that unmanned gap. It was man, but it was the linebacker that was behind off yeah, of the ball. step off the ball, right. Well, when he goes to the line of scrimmage on that particular fourth and one, the Giants had changed their defense from the way they treated the, the short yardage ones from before. They had a man in every A gap, B gaps, and C gaps. So right there, okay, Trevor, look at that and go, timeout, okay, and come to the sideline and say, hey, look, it, it wasn't a good look. We've got a backup right guard in and Cole Van Lanik, because Sheriff was off the field for a short period of time for some reason. I'm not sure if it was injury or equipment related. I think it was injury because he went in the blue tent for a little bit. So then maybe reassess where you're at. We'll take a timeout. Jaguars defense trying to get back off the mat after giving it up in the fourth quarter last week on the ground especially. And – facing this Denver offense that can't get uh, out of its own way so far this year. It's the Doug Peterson Show on the Jaguars Radio Network. It's Ford Truck Month. Now's the time to get a great deal on the only trucks built Ford Tough. Work or play, 
Get after it in a new Ford F-150 or Super Duty truck. Get a Ford Maverick or get after any adventure in a Ford Ranger pickup. Take advantage of our best offers on the full Ford lineup of trucks. But you better get going. These deals won't last. Get to Ford Truck Month. Some models, trims, and features may not be available or may be subject to change. See your local dealer for details. At Five Star Credit Union, you inspire them to go the extra mile to meet your financial needs. That's why they offer Jaguars fans more banking options like better rates and no hidden fees. Their team is also dedicated to making the communities they serve stronger, volunteering their time and talents while donating millions to local nonprofits. Five Star Credit Union, fivestarcu.org. Go Jags! Jaguars fans, huddle up for the best defense against expensive car repairs, CarShield. Score big with the nation's number one automotive protection company, CarShield. They offer affordable plans that cover over 6,000 parts and systems in your car, truck, or SUV. Don't miss any Jaguars action this season with a car breakdown. Call the MVPs at CarShield for their best coverage ever. Call 800-471-1223. 800-471-1223. Go Jags! And we're back with breaking news. Coke Zero Sugar might be the best Coke ever. That's right, Jim. Coke Zero Sugar is a must-try for any Coke fan, so make sure you... Jim. (laughs) Jim. We're on the air. Ooh, yes, this tastes like the best Coke ever to me. Your thoughts, Jen? Well, can I have a sip? (laughs) Jen, we're in the middle of reporting the news. I need to try it first. Welcome back. The Doug Peterson Show continues right now. J.P. Shadrick with Jeff Lagerman. Thanks for joining us on the Doug Peterson Show. The Jaguars head coach in the first segment of the show each week. We heard from him. The Jaguars headed to London coming up, well, tonight. They'll uh, be on the plane yeah. and arrive Friday morning in the U.K. They'll stay out in the countryside at a resort where they'll have a practice field. And then they'll head down to Wembley on Sunday and play the football game against the Broncos. Well, and, for, and tomorrow's always a challenge for, Friday for yes, the players absolutely. because you're you're trying to get a night's sleep on a plane, and then when you hit the ground in London, you have a commute from the airport to the facility where you're going to be staying at, and it's typically during rush hour, which can be. Uh, Long, yeah, no police escorts. Uh, there are no police escorts over there, mm-hmm. and uh, and then also uh, you kind of jump right into the day of work. If you're a player, you've got meetings, you've got practice, and then you'll get some time to yourself that night. But uh, yeah, it's uh, there's it, it, you don't feel fresh and spry. At least I never have on a Friday, and if I haven't, I guarantee you the players haven't as well. Right. Jaguars defense uh, gave up all the rushing yards they could in the fourth quarter, it felt like, when Saquon got going and then Daniel Jones was ripping off runs. And, of course, two weeks ago it was the short passing game of Matt Ryan, who has since been benched in Indianapolis. Well, he had a career-high completions, a bunch of crossing routes. So, you know, it, one week it's one thing, the next week it's the run defense and – You know, they're trying to figure it out on all sides right now on the defensive side. Well, and you know how I do, JP. I take notes during the game, and and you had the the lead at the beginning of the second half. You took the lead 17-13, to and you go back to where the offense gave the ball over on downs and talk about change of momentum. Okay, so then the Giants take over the ball at the 21, and then on that drive, the Giants are able to put together some successful rushing plays. It's both with Barkley and the quarterback, Daniel Jones. He had an opportunity on that drive. Okay, Rayshon Jenkins has an opportunity when he has the pass defensed. If he gets a little better jump, that's an interception. That's an opportunity lost there defensively. You end up allowing a 10-play, 79-yard drive. And also, if you'll remember, another mistake on that drive. Because I think that's a mistake with Rayshon not making that interception. If you, you expect your players to make big plays, right? Rayshon make that play. Tyson Campbell covering in the end zone gets called for interference, gives the Giants the ball first and goal at the one yard line, and then the Giants take it in. And then you have an opportunity to answer that offensively. You have a false start at the beginning part of that drive. You allow pressure 
on the first and 15, and you had an open wide receiver down the field in Christian Kirk, where the pressure affects the quarterback, you go three and punt. And then you give the ball back, and then once again it's Barkley and it's Daniel Jones on the ground, and they run a four-minute drill to the T, the Giants did, eating up the clock and putting some extra points on the board and making it tough against the Jaguars, and that kind of was, was the game there because the Jaguars weren't able to answer. Although, I give them credit. They fought back at the end, you know, but you know, mor- moral victories in the NFL are not exactly what you're striving for. You're looking for victories, the ones that go in the W column. We'll take a timeout. We'll come back and get into the Jaguars trade earlier this week. We heard a little bit from head coach Doug Peterson earlier. James Robinson, now a member of the New York Jets. And this is the Doug Peterson Show on Jaguars Radio. On the road, there's a thin line between safety and tragedy. Don't cross it. Give law enforcement, first responders, and service professionals the space to safely do their jobs. When you see flashing lights, move over a lane or slow down 20 miles per hour below the posted speed limit. See lights? Move over, Florida. Brought to you by the Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles and the Florida Highway Patrol. Your pet means the world to you. So Pet Paradise created a slice of paradise just for them. Pet Paradise is your complete pet health care destination with resort-style day camp, overnight boarding, professional grooming, and compassionate veterinary care from New Day, all located under one roof. Pet Paradise has over 50 locations to serve pet fanatics like you nationwide. Book today at PetParadise.com, the official pet care provider of the Jacksonville Jaguars. At Tropical Smoothie Cafe, one taste and you're feeling good now, smiling wider now, seeing brighter now, bucket dunking now, namaste in now, popping a wheelie now, living lighter now. You're on Tropic Time now. And on Mondays, try our Jaguars Duval Delight Smoothies for $2.99. And you're roaring louder now, end zone dancing now, sipping spirit now. You're on Tropic Time now at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Reconnect with the best version of you at Amara Med Spa, Northeast Florida's premier luxury medical spa, located in Ponte Vedra, Town Center, Avondale, St. Augustine, and Fernandina. With the most advanced injectors, estheticians, and technology, Amara Med Spa is redefining beauty. Offering services such as Botox and filler, M-Sculpt Neo, painless laser hair removal, and advanced skincare treatments. Visit theamaramedspa.com and book a complimentary consultation today. Welcome back. The Doug Peterson Show continues right now. We're back. It is the Doug Peterson Show. J.P. Shadrick, Jeff Lagerman, our thanks to head coach Doug Peterson joining us in the first hour, our first uh, first segment of the hour-long Doug Peterson Show. Glad uh, you've joined us today. The Jaguars headed to London tonight. They'll arrive Friday morning in the U.K. and play on Sunday at Wembley Stadium a place they know very well from over the years. Last visit to Wembley, though, for the Jaguars, of course, before the pandemic started. 2019, a loss to the Texans in that game. And then, of course, 2020, no London games at all. Kind of and forget about that. 21, right? they fulfilled, helped fulfill the NFL's obligation at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium and played a game there against the Dolphins and won on two wacky field goals last year. Yeah, the uh, I, I heard that the stadium, the Tottenham Stadium, Tottenham, yeah, Tottenham. Tottenham. Yes. Not Tottenham. You can take the boy out of Virginia, but you can't take the Virginia <laughs> out of the boy. <laughs> oh, but anyway, uh, I heard that that stadium is amazing, and uh, at some point I would like to see it. Maybe I'll go see a football game there yes, at some point. good idea. That would be soccer game. That would Yes, that's what that hey, is. Uh, by the way, I yep. um, want to wish nothing but the best to James Robinson. I know Doug Peterson did the same thing. He's a, he's a good dude, and he incredibly quiet, and uh, but a good guy, works hard, kept his mouth quiet, and just worked hard. And I appreciate James Robinson. I wish him nothing but the best. And unfortunately, at the end of the day, you know, this is a business, 
and decisions are made to where teams and sometimes the player make decisions that are in their best best interest. And sometimes it's disappointing, but it is what it is, and I, and I hope nothing but the best for both, both parties. I hope the Jaguars end up getting a great player with the picks that they get out of it, and I hope James turns out to be a great asset to the New York Jets. Consider where James Robinson came from before the draft. He was – not he, obviously he was an undrafted player, but had to work his way through the Shrine game to even get on the radar, and then, okay, he goes to a small school, and they sign him, undrafted guy. Leonard Fournette's in front of him when he arrives here. I mean, give me a break. So how's he even going to make the team and contribute? He just kind of kept grinding and grinding and got playing time. Doug Marone put him in the lineup. Let's play. Here we are. And they did now a great all of job. a sudden he's the starting, most likely the starting running back at the New York Jets. And they have a winning record and they need him to perform. That's yeah. Big. And unfortunately they have another offensive line injury. So I, <laughs> I hope they got somebody that can step in Elijah Vera Tucker's role. He's a rookie uh, offensive lineman from USC that I love coming out of the draft. He's a really good football player. But they've had some offensive line injuries up there, so hopefully James can still find his way. And just and also consider once he got here, after all that, he finally made his case to be on this roster and stay. What happened last year to him with the previous regime did not want him on the field, and then he injures his Achilles second to last game of the season, has to go through all that to get back for the start of this season, uh, and – yeah, so best of luck to James. Yeah, there's Great there's guy. a lot of people that are here in Jacksonville that are fans of James Robinson and are rooting for him in a big way. Well, guess what? We'll get to see him uh, the Thursday before Christmas. Hopefully you won't see a whole lot of him. <laughs> in other words, uh, you know, where he's having a field day running the football against the Jaguars' defense. Yeah, no doubt about that. That, that does mean also that uh, Travis Etienne has come into his own a bit, I think. Uh, well, three look, straight he, Jay, games, over 100 scrimmage yards. He's deserved. Jay, look, Travis Etienne deserves the role that he's now going to have. And, it, and I'm not saying that he had to have – a trade happened to get it. I mean, he's just earned the role whether James Robinson is on this team or not because he's just been really good. Now, there's still a lot of areas that he can get better and learn from. You know, Indianapolis, the long run, make that guy, that safety, make him make a move to where you can beat him. The question that you talked about with Fred Taylor, okay, give him a little something. Uh, the third and one play, you know, follow your lineman, Cam Robinson around. I mean, and but the one thing about Travis that is really special is that he's explosive. And you can't coach explosive players. What I mean by that is you can coach them all you want, okay? but the reality is you can't coach an explosive play out of a player who's a slug. It just doesn't happen. <laughs> can't teach speed. Right? You can't. <laughs> You can't. I mean, it's you know, you can't take a, a tortoise and make it a hare, and vice versa. It just it doesn't work that way. We'll come back in a moment, and plenty more ahead. The Jaguars and the Broncos coming up this Sunday. This is the Doug Peterson Show on the Jaguars Radio Network. Jax fans, sign up for ESPN Plus to see Trevor Lawrence and the Jaguars take on Russell Wilson and the Broncos across the pond at London's Wembley Stadium Sunday, October 30th. ESPN Plus gives you access to nonstop NFL action all season long with live games, originals, highlights, and more. After you sign up, be sure to log into your device with your ESPN account to stream on your TV and other devices. Visit ESPNPlus.com slash NFL for more details. Jaguars fans are gearing up and saving big at Fanatics.com, the world's largest collection of officially licensed fan gear from all the leagues, teams, and Jaguars players you love. Shop the most trusted brands, exclusive designs by Fanatics, and autograph collectibles from today's biggest stars. Join Fanatics Rewards today and earn fan cash on every purchase. Shop now and get today's special offer. Fanatics.com, officially licensed everything. It's football season, and time to take your game to the next level with a Ford F-150 truck. Light up your tailgate with an available Pro Power onboard generator. And with an available 3.5-liter EcoBoost engine, you can tow just about anything you need to rule the stadium lot. Ford F-150, part of the F-Series lineup that have been the best-selling pickups for 45 straight years. Get to your local Ford store today. Proud sponsor of your Jacksonville Jaguars. 
Jaguars fans, here's a great way to pay with pride wherever you go. Exclusively from TIAA Bank, the Jacksonville Jaguars Visa Debit Card comes with a fierce look and fantastic features, along with the convenience to make purchases online or at millions of locations worldwide. And it's yours, free, when you open a Yield Pledge checking account. Order yours today. Visit TIAABank.com slash JagsCard. TIAA Bank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC, and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hey, Jags fans, Brian Sexton for DreamFinders Homes. In a complex housing market, do decisions on the biggest purchase of your life stress you out? At DreamFinders Homes, they can build the home of your dreams in one of their many communities in Northeast Florida. With a mortgage company in-house, they're here to assist you throughout the entire process. Choose from their wide range of single-family homes or townhomes from the 300,000s. DreamFinders Homes specializes in homes built to fit your lifestyle. Call 904-590-2545 or visit DreamFindersHomes.com. You're beyond busy. Between work and the kids, the dogs and the cat, let us help. With Publix Delivery powered by Instacart, you'll get the items you need from the store you know. Just shop online, select the time you'd like your order delivered, and grocery shopping is done, giving you more time to take care of everything else. Publix Delivery, powered by Instacart. Visit Publix.com slash delivery to shop now. That's Publix.com slash delivery. Item prices vary from in-store prices. Service fees may apply. Available in select zip codes. Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. Welcome back. The Doug Peterson Show continues right now. Welcome back to the Doug Peterson Show, presented by the Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles, the Jaguars and the Denver Broncos, coming up at Wembley Sunday, 9.30 a.m. Get your eggs and bacon and a complete breakfast, if you'd like, or not. Uh, How about the nice all- hot coffee? I got, I got a suggestion for you. Watch some football. What? Okay, wake up early and hit the... And get you an all star special. Oh, that's pretty good. You know where that restaurant I, where they you get them at? I do. Yeah, I mean it's got the waffle, the eggs, the bread, the grits, mm-hmm. the meat. I mean that's that's like the ultimate Sunday breakfast pregame meal. There are a number of if options. you're not playing, uh, right? Yeah, don't go. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, and same in the in the UK uh, on the ground. I know you're not a huge fan of the British. Food, as you put it, delicacy, but, you could say. Uh, but their breakfast, they do breakfast very well. They do, they do very well. They do. I'm look, I'm looking forward to to the game. I really like the atmosphere at that game. is a lot of fun. It's unique. Um, you know, people all over from Europe come to the game. Um, all kind of different jerseys, more Jaguars jerseys now as the years have gone along. Let's get back to this matchup now. And it is a, a quite a matchup this week for the Jaguars' offensive line against the defensive front and outside linebackers for Denver that can really bring it, and uh, they're rated very highly. But it's an offensive line group that's got a, a rookie center still, obviously. Tyler Shatley, veteran left guard, veteran right guard. We'll see what Sheriff's status is. He was out of the game a little bit last week. Uh, and then the tackles, uh, Robinson on the left, Taylor on the right. How are they doing? Well, let me let me. I'll start from left and go to the right. Okay, Okay. Cam Robinson got a little dinged up in that game, but his athleticism just continues to really show. And what I love is that the coaching staff is utilizing his athleticism. They're allowing him to get out in space. The long run that ETN had for forty-eight yards—that's that's that's what they call you know like a toss crack where you have tight end wide receiver doing the cracking, although they're not smacking guys in the ear hole. They're walling them off. Cam's pulling around, and he's so athletic that he can operate in space and get blocks better than most guards, which tackles aren't really known for guys that can run like that, but he does. Uh, Shatley, I think, has done a really good job, really good job to the point that they haven't missed a beat. And uh, and I hope, by the way, Ben Barch is healing up. Fortner, I think, took a big step up this past game against the Giants because you know what I saw? I saw a young player that's got a little nasty to him. JP, I'm talking about he was blocking Dexter Lawrence down the field where Dexter got mad and threw Fortner down to the ground <laughs> with him because Fortner was blocking him to the whistle down the field. Right. And then, and then throwing a linebacker down on a block probably was a hold, but nonetheless – it was awesome. Liked seeing that. And then, you know, the grit of uh, right guard Brandon Sheriff is tremendous. He's just so consistent, and he's athletic as well. But Juwan Taylor 
has played his best games back-to-back as a pro. I said that last week against Indy, it was his best game as a pro, period. He followed it up with another strong game. And the difference is, is the way that he's run blocking, he's finishing, his pass protection's good. You want to make sure that as an offensive lineman, you eliminate the false start penalties overall. But this group has got a big challenge this week, but they are getting better and better. Credit Phil Rauscher, the offensive line coach, because this group, I think, has taken a lot of steps forward this year. And then you throw in the uh, tight ends who've had a hand in some of that blocking up front too. Well, and I think, and you bring up a point there that I, I should be ashamed of not mentioning him with the offensive lineman, and that's Chris Manhurts, who is one of the best blocking tight ends that there is in the league. PFF has a ranking of all the tight ends as, as receivers, as blockers overall in offense. Manhurts is near the top of the list, if not at the top, when it comes to blocking. He's been really good. Now, the uh, the leg whip thing, you know, you want to get rid of that. Sure. In fact, uh, it, because it's a dangerous play, that's why they got it out. In fact, uh, my first start, a little flashback, my first start ever as a defensive end in this league was 1990 at Cincinnati. And I'm going against the Hall of Famer Anthony Munoz. Mm -hmm. Wasn't a Hall of Famer at that point yet, but he was well on his way. way. He was well on his way. He knew it was coming. And I thought I had Anthony beat inside. I did an inside swim. And then uh, all of a sudden I get tripped up. And I'm I'm going. I'm going to the quarterback. Next thing you know, here comes this big leg whipping around and catches my arm that I was catching myself with on the ground. He hits me in the back of the elbow and literally – pops my elbow the way it's not supposed to go Mm. and uh, yeah I was down for the count on that so my first career start ever as defensive end I got legged whipped by Hall of Famer Anthony Munoz did you tell him about that I did in fact in fact no uh, when he was in town (laughs) for the big weekend for the uh, Tony Baselli jersey retirement at the uh, showing of 71 yeah yeah I talked with Anthony, and, and I shared that story with him. And I said, man, I said, uh, you about took me out for a couple of weeks after that one. But it was a cool moment. You know? What did he yeah. say? He's like, yeah, you deserved it. You were going after my quarterback. Well, it was, no, it, he wouldn't say that. <laughs> the great players in this game are the ones that physically have great gifts. But as they age, their, their seasoning, their smarts that they have – Getting it done and by any means necessary, they get creative. And Anthony Munoz had it at that point because I was not expecting the leg whip. And I can tell you, if I had faced him a decade earlier, he wouldn't have needed the leg whip to get me. He would have just flat out blocked me. We're back in a moment. Our final thoughts ahead of this Jaguars-Broncos matchup coming up at Wembley Stadium. It's the Doug Peterson Show on Jaguars Radio. On the road, there's a thin line between safety and tragedy. Don't cross it. Give law enforcement, first responders, and service professionals the space to safely do their jobs. When you see flashing lights, move over a lane or slow down 20 miles per hour below the posted speed limit. See lights? Move over, Florida. Brought to you by the Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles and the Florida Highway Patrol. Are you suffering from shoulder pain? If you have clicking and popping in the shoulder joint, persistent pain that intensifies with use, an inability to lift your arm over your head, or a tingling, burning sensation in the shoulder, elbow, or wrist, waiting to see a doctor could make your injury worse. Baptist Health and Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute have innovative and effective treatment options available right now to relieve your pain and restore your mobility. Don't wait. Call 904-JOI-2000. Your hometown gate now has more ways to save. Introducing MyGate Rewards, a new loyalty program with member-exclusive savings and fuel discounts. Earn points on in-store purchases, take advantage of special offers, and save on products you love. Score free coffee, fountain drinks, pizza, and soft serve with Gate's frequent shopper clubs. Then use your points on savings at the pump. Download the MyGate Rewards app in the App Store today or ask a store associate for more information. Go from good to gate. 
If the last couple years have taught us anything, it's to show the ones we love how much we care. That's why Pet Paradise calls you by name from the moment you arrive. Why our pack leaders know each and every friend you like to play with out on the turf. And that you like some snuggles before you fall asleep. The more we see and get to know you, the more you'll see how much you mean to us. Pet Paradise. It's a new day in pet care. At Tropical Smoothie Cafe, one taste and you're feeling good now, smiling wider now, seeing brighter now, bucket dunking now, namaste in now, popping a wheelie now, living lighter now. You're on Tropic Time now. And on Mondays, try our Jaguars Duval Delight Smoothies for $2.99. And you're roaring louder now, end zone dancing now, sipping spirit now. You're on Tropic Time now at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. With the first pick in the 2022 draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Duck Duck Rooter, the best plumbing and septic company in Florida. Congratulations, Duck Duck Rooter. So tell us, how does it feel to be picked number one? Mm -hmm. Duck Duck Rooter Plumbing and Septic Services is excited to announce we're a proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. When you need help tackling any type of plumbing or septic issue, call our team of first round draft picks for the win. DuckDuckRooter.com. That's DuckDuckRooter.com. Welcome back. The Doug Peterson Show continues right now. We're coming down the home stretch on the Doug Peterson Show. J.P. Shadrick with Jeff Lagerman. Our thanks to Jaguars head coach Doug Peterson, Joe Fortunato, Brent Reber on the audio and video side. As always, and the Jaguars face the Denver Broncos Sunday. 9.30 is the kickoff time Eastern. 1.30 the kickoff time in London the London clocks fall back an hour the night before the game to Greenwich Mean Time from British Summer Time. Mm-hmm. So it's a four-hour time difference on game day. And uh, so there you go. Looking forward to that. The uh, Both teams two and five, and both teams have dropped four in a row. And both teams have a lot to get off their chest, if you will, in this game. I uh, think. And, I, and I think for both teams, you you want to get the win just because you want to stop talking about the losing, and that's not the reason why you want to win. But my point is, is that you want to have affirmation of what you're doing because you have new regimes with both organizations that you want to have affirmation that what you're doing is right, that you're headed in the right direction. And I think both fan bases want to believe that the team is headed in the right direction. And this Jaguars organization was the worst team in football for two consecutive years, and the team started out hot. And team and uh, people were thinking, wow, this is great, right? And people in the national media were actually starting to talk about the Jaguars as, hey, people are taking notice. And then you hit the losing stretch, and now you start to question what you're doing sometimes. But you can't question that. You still got to kind of stay the course, and and you got to have a win though that affirms what you're doing is the right thing. Yeah, just keep it up on offense and moving the ball. Just those situations have come back to bite him a little bit. Some of the short yardage stuff, the red zone. We could talk about that all day. And of course, on defense, the the running game last week in the fourth quarter, the four minute situation, especially. Oh boy, couldn't couldn't get him off the field. And then and uh, make a play defensively. Yeah, make a play. Get a turnover. They've gone dry on the turnovers the last two three weeks. Yeah, and that's uh, that's got to change. And uh, and I will say that when you play in really big games, uh, you have something that's called I call the magnification of mistakes, which turnovers are in that category. And so in a game like this, if you end up having a costly turnover with both teams having lost a lot of games recently. It could take a lot of – it could drain a team. So you want to be the team that gets the takeaway first, not the one that gives it away. All right, Jaguars back in London. They're back at Wembley for the first time since 2019 this coming Sunday for a matchup against the Denver Broncos. It's the ninth all-time visit to London for the Jags, the second all-time for the Broncos. Again, an 8.30 airtime with countdown to kickoff on the network Sunday and then a 9.30 kickoff for the Jaguars and the Broncos. Thanks to our entire crew, and thank you for listening to the Doug Peterson Show on the Jaguars Radio Network.